You have found Authentic Business Adventures, a business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Coming to you remotely, but closely, I'm in Sun Prairie, just outside of Madison. And Sarah, you are in Madison, I think, right? Yeah, I'm in Monona. Awesome. Man, you're just a stone's throw away. <laughs> <laughs> My name is James Kateman, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. And I am excited, excited to learn from Sarah Mullins, the founder of Allocrate Rentals. Sarah, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thanks for having awesome. me. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on. So why don't you tell us, let's just start, what is Allocrate Rentals? Yeah, so we're a boutique event rental company. All right. Um, so we service a 250 mile radius. Wow. Yeah. All right. And um, we're about, I'd say, 60% weddings and then okay. about 40% corporate. Nice. So think of any get together pre COVID when you sure. need <laughs> <laughs> more tables and chairs, backdrops, bars, um, furniture, and decor. All right. Um, our niche is that the pieces we carry are really either one of a kind pieces that are found vintage items we've repurposed mm -hmm. um, or locally handcrafted and made products. So working nice. with local makers to build tables, build benches, um, find mid-century modern sofas, have them reupholstered. All right. So a very wow. boutique um, side of rentals. So how long have you been around? Uh, we'll be nine years, nine years in a few weeks. Holy cow. Congrats. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. That is, is that super right? cool. I think that's right. Yeah. yeah we'll, call it good. <laughs> we'll call it good. So what made you start this? Cause this had to be a huge undertaking. Just I'm thinking with inventory, storage, awareness, marketing, insert mm -hmm. issues here, right? Yeah. I always say that I'm kind of a serial preneur or I've right. always known that I wanted to have a business. I never knew quite what. And so um, this was the first business that we found the need through our own personal experience. So we mm -hmm. got married and we found that my husband and I found rentals at the time were, you know, produced in other countries, maybe weren't the quality or had the character that we would have hoped. Um, both being art majors, we looked to move for pieces, you know, with stories themselves that could have kind of express who we are as individuals. All right. And we got married and found that that just wasn't something that existed. And one of the best pieces of advice that I ever received as a curious entrepreneur, a young sponge at times, was to uh, move to an area, find a need, and fill it. Oh. And so this happened with our wedding and we kind of looked at each other and we ended up making a lot of our inventory. We ended up selling a lot of it on Craigslist afterwards, meeting a lot of couples in the similar boat. Nice. And it was just like, this shouldn't be this hard. This should be fun. Right? Yeah. Celebration, so, right? Best day of your life or... Exactly. Yeah. Top. We didn't have family around and, you know, you don't need, I don't know, when you're looking for like 10, 10 of something, you can find two. I always compare uh -huh. it to like shopping at TJ Maxx, you know. Sure. <laughs> you don't, if you go in there looking for something, you won't find it. But right. if you go in just shopping, you'll find a ton of things. So... so okay. So you found this need... Yeah. And then you said, all right, let's do this. So did yeah. you have to quit an existing job or close up a different business or what were you doing before? Um, let's see. So I was working in the ad world in Minneapolis prior and um, we had just moved to Madison. My husband was working for the university, the extension. Okay. And I was doing multiple jobs. I had um, kind of promised myself I wouldn't go back to the corporate world. All right. And so I, um, and nothing wrong with it. It was just more of a challenge for myself. Sure. I had... I was doing framing. I was doing window displays. Um, I was doing freelance work. I was also working for the county. I was doing some interesting odd and ends jobs that kind of came together to make a full-time salary. Sure. And so this was kind of a new thing to try. And we like to throw spaghetti on the wall. Right. And so <laughs> we found a little garage near our house that we rented. All right. And so we wanted it away from the house. And so we just started. We, start, we got the lease for the space, which was a garage before we had a name for the business. We started collecting before we had a name for the business. All right. We just kind of went about it like you would any creative project. Like, well, you gotta get the wheels spinning and see what happens. Right, start somewhere. 
Yeah, it was a low investment and um, we weren't the types. We did do a business plan. I worked with SCORE and mm -hmm. um, took some classes and things, but we really just kind of started. Just got okay. dirty. Yeah. Was this your first business that you ever started? No, I, I've, I've done freelance before. It was my first um, storefront. Okay. So prior to that, I had um, had businesses out of our home. I did freelance graphic design and um, the window display design. I'd started like a pants company with a friend. Like a pants company? Yeah, that's a fun story. Like pants? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make your own or you got to tell me about that quick. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so it was a buddy who was in Minneapolis. Her name was Tara. My name's Sarah. I had spent some time in Sri Lanka. And when I came back, I had these great pants. And they're kind of like, um, they're wrap pants. W-R-A-P. Okay. So you kind of put them on like a big adult diaper. <laughs> like wrap the front to the back, wrap the back to the front. Anyway, they're a great fit and they're very flattering. Um, and so they were going to be Teresa Raz. She was going to design one half. I designed the other. <laughs> and you could pick what the front looked like, what the back looked like. We had different snaps and closures. They were very fun to wear. Wow. With PJ pants, yeah. <laughs> All right. So did this get off the ground? No, we had prototypes and um, we got to the point that we started getting into branding and um, Tara and I were good buddies and we kind of realized it wasn't a good idea. How come? <laughs> um, I think she didn't love the pants. <laughs> Neither of us really loved them at the end of the day. I think they were um, more successful when they were just one solid fabric. All right. It got pretty wild. Gotcha. Okay. But so it was it's just kind fun. of fun. And then you're like, yeah. oh, what are we doing? Oh, and I think a lot of business owners run into that. You kind of just keep trying different things. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting was that idea started from just a fun idea and not necessarily a need. So maybe what we found out quickly is, you know, it's fun, make a few pair of pants, but there wasn't necessarily a need for it. Are there still some of those pants just hanging around? Yeah. I customers, got random no, customers or friends, family <laughs> bought them? And... A lot of um, family was gifted them. All right. I'm not sure that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. Anyway, random, random stories. That's pretty cool. Well, I would think just about every entrepreneur has some idea that they will call it half launch. Not necessarily a bad yeah. thing. But it's probably a good thing that you pulled the shoot oh, before for sure. you got too crazy into it and invested thousands of dollars into getting prototypes made and all that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's who cool. we are. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you got the you got the space and then you started collecting, yeah. I guess it would be products, right? Or are they all antiques or homemade or yeah. just different eclectic stuff? When it started, it was very affordable to start with what we called the smalls. So at okay. the time was when blue mason jars and like burlap runners, if you can kind of envision sure. that, that look, right. were really hot. A lot of people were putting babies and, you know, vintage antique wood dough bowls and cute little more props and items. All right, sure. So the inventory really started with a lot of smalls. And then as the business started to grow and word of mouth um, spread in this community, it's a very green business concept and business model. And so I think Madison was a really great place to start it. And so we saw, um, we saw just, it was, it was fruitful. Like things were going really well yeah. um, to the point that I could kind of quit some of those side jobs and eventually nice. my husband quit his job and he became our delivery man. And we just tag teamed it for a few years. So at what point were you actually making enough money for you guys to quit your other jobs? Was this one year, year two? Yeah. One, one year. year. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. The timing was really, really great. Um, we just hit the trend right when it was starting to take off mm -hmm. and no one else was really doing it yet. We were the first in the state of Wisconsin. Wow. Um, we saw others doing it on the coasts, but we had okay. really adjusted the business model for the Midwest because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not warm here for six months out of the year. So, Turns out. <laughs> yeah. And our business really took off when we started carrying tables. So um, I think it was about four years in, we worked with a good buddy of ours and built wood harvest tables. I'm sitting at one right now. What They're is just, a harvest table? Just so I... Yeah, I'm it's I don't a know. wood... I'm trying to see, can you see this table I'm sitting at? Oh, nice. Okay. Really lovely wood tables. All right. And um, they have folding legs and we design them so that they're very like user-friendly for a rental they collapse but they're very oh. solid like the table's not nice. gonna wiggle at you when you're sitting on it right at the time no one had anything like that 
it was, you know, think of like a plastic folding table that you covered with linens. So this was kind of a big deal. Super big deal. That many years ago. Yeah. So that kind of took our business just to another level. We found quickly, we had to go from a truck and a trailer to getting a big box truck. So we had oh. a 24 foot box truck and you quickly right. outgrow that garage space. Well, can we rent the space next door? Sure. And before you know it, you're kind of busting at the seams. How much space are we talking here? Are we talking two car garage, four car garage? Um, that garage space, that was like 1500 square feet, I think. Okay. So it was a decent, decent size. size. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't super functional. You know, imagine in the winter, <laughs> we really described ourselves as like, you know, glorified movers because we were just moving furniture every just back weekend. and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Take it here. Pick it up there. Take it there. Clean it. Right. Pick it up there. Wrap it. So yeah. I'm trying to think 10 years ago or nine years ago, how did you get your name out there? Um, our website. Okay. Yeah. So Facebook was primarily the social media channel mm -hmm. um, and word of mouth. Like Madison is the best community for just spreading ideas and through word of mouth. So we, right. we got into the right circle and birds of a feather flock together. And quickly we started just... to find our people um, and we found a lot of them. Madison's just chock full of like a lot of artists and creatives and sure. people that were looking to express themselves at an event. All right. And that's really when Pinterest is starting to take off too. So I think there's this All pressure right. to have your event look a certain way and photos look a certain way. And like, oh, there's this new backdrop to get married in front of. Can you guys build that? So we would work All with right. local builders and build pieces and then carry it. So All right. Yeah. It really, we've been the best, gosh, what are we now? Six, we had six years in a row of the best um, rental and decor company in the state. Six years in the state? Yeah, I'm looking wow. over at the wall because we've got the awards up over there. They just lose track of all these awards. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's yeah, super cool. We had a good running. So do you keep adding or does do people's tastes change when it comes to stuff like this? Trends change. Okay. Like yeah. I'm the kind of guy that, that used to have a desk with just an old door and two filing cabinets. So that's and cool. it wasn't because it was eclectic. It was just oh. because it was utilitarian. Oh, sure. It's both. Um, so over the years, the trends have changed a lot that it's been good. It's allowed us to stay boutique and we have a sale once a year. We just on Saturday had our annual sale. We call it our dock sale. Oh, nice. And so this year it went virtual just with everything going on, but mm -hmm. um, we did it through Instagram and our yeah. team was able to help sell pieces that just aren't moving. We say, if they're not paying their rent, we get rid of them so that we can bring in fresh inventory um, that hopefully moves more. We're now in a, a new space. We're off of industrial drive in Monona near mm -hmm. um, like there's a Walmart in the Viridian homes. Sure. And this space is an old oil distribution center. It's about 3000 square feet. So not huge. We're busting at the seams here too, but um, it's kind of nice to be forced to edit what you carry mm -hmm. and be thoughtful about what you bring in. Because I think the slippery slope of this world is um, we are like organized hoarders. I was just going to say, it's totally <laughs> hoarding, we're, right? We're hoarders, yeah. You see something cool, it's like, ooh, let's carry that. But the reality is like, it could just sit there. So to find something that's functional for an event. And obviously with COVID, we've been hit really hard. So trying to think about, like right now you can't even have an indoor event. What does that mean, you know, for right. the next few months for us? So, right. I just, yeah, yeah I want to, it's always tough using the C word around, right? But it, sure. when it, you're talking about events, that's a huge deal. That's just the world changes. We have um, in the office that I'm in, next door to us is a woman that builds decorative walls for weddings and for. Oh, yeah. Um, is it Cedar and Spice? Uh, no, it is. Yep. I want to say enchanted. Ugh. Okay, I'll do this for you. No, they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super cool, hugely elaborate stuff. But they're huh. they're essentially saying that when they used to be able to go sixty miles ish, now yeah. they're going to go three states. Right. Well, so that changes that. the game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we we pretty much just hit pause. Just hit pause. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the reality is, you know, we can't force for us to pivot would be going most likely to retail. And we, we've done that to the extent of having the dock sale, but right. I mean, we could collect and thrift and sell mm -hmm. full time, but that's not necessarily um, where we're putting our energy right now either. Gotcha. So, 
yeah, I took on this full-time job with Wibbick um, as my pivot in a lot of ways. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we hit a point where the writing was on the wall for our event industry mm -hmm. to say, this is our sole income for our family. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for us? How do we keep our business alive through this and keep mm. our staff employed and feed our own family? Sure. So tell me, like, I guess I'm a Neanderthal when it comes to stuff like this, because I kept thinking this will only last a month, a couple of weeks. Yeah. And just kicking the can down the road saying, hey, after the election, it'll blow over, <laughs> no big thing. But I'm like, man, this thing has staying power. Yeah. So at what <laughs> point did you realize that this is not going to blow over quickly? Well, I got the job in June. Wow. In, okay. June. All right. So well played. our business is seasonal. Mm hmm so we're only busy for six months out of the year and we carry a line of credit through the winter to get us through the winter. Gotcha. So we came out of our slow season to get hit by COVID. Oh, not and ideal. And it was not good timing. Um, and we moved at the same time personally. Oh, so okay. I just moved out to Brooklyn, Wisconsin, out to the country. We were living in the city and looking for a little more space. Sure. So that's why we say we moved out to a tree house. We moved out to the woods. <laughs> and which is great. It's been a very great escape, but um, it took a little while for us to realize, I think, because we were already isolated now living out in the country mm -hmm. to realize what was really happening big picture. And a friend told me about this job opening at Wibbick. They were a Wibbick client for years. Yeah. I said, yeah, I think you'd be really good at that. Like, nice. I love talking to business owners. It's fun. Right? Yeah, you too. I mean, it's and great that, hearing stories. Right. I love it. I love it. And I love hearing about a business owner doing coaching through someplace like Wibbick. Yeah. Because I hear a lot of people doing coaching that have never started their own business. That's hard. Or maybe they did years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what, what are you going to tell somebody to do? Yeah. I read I, in a book somewhere that this is what happens when bad things arise, right? Right. So, um, yeah. I, I credit Wibbick. I think that uh, part of the reason they hired me is that I am a business owner right now going through this. So, mm -hmm. The role is funded by the CARES Act. So CARES oh, Act nice. dollars are literally paying my salary okay. um, through Wibbick to help other businesses. And I can empathize with them. We did PPP mm -hmm. dollars. We mm -hmm. have an idle loan. We got the idle grant. Like I can speak that language and I can also speak the language of being tired and pivoting and right. you know, just relating to them and empathizing. Sure. Interesting. Yeah. That's awesome. It really so is. Let's talk about employees. How many employees do you guys sure. have? Um, we had four. Okay. And we're down to two. Okay. Is so, that a you, your husband, and then two additional? No. Um, so my husband and I, three years into the business, had our first baby. And then nice. shortly Congrats. after that, had our second baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, we have a four and a six-year-old at home. And my husband um, is home homeschooling them and, or not homeschooling, virtual schooling with them right now. Sure. Um, and he designs backpacks on the side. You would enjoy meeting him. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then, um, sorry, you asked me about employees. Um, we have an amazing office manager, Courtney, who's been with us for over five years. Wow. And I met her as an old neighbor, good buddy. She's got a text, a major, a master's in textiles, a very creative spirit. Wow. Um, and then Anna helps us with social media. So actually, I should say more like we have one full-time and kind of two part-time. And then okay. right now we've got um, help with deliveries. And Justin and Jason have both been kind of um, toggling and helping us. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So kind of front of shop, back of shop. Mm -hmm. And then I, I still continue to kind of shop, um, do the curation, inventory, purchasing, buying, mm -hmm. um, marketing, things like that. Are there deals to be had now? with the changing world or is it more expensive because people are just sitting at home buying stuff? I mean, we've slowed down our purchasing just because of our revenue stream. Sure. But um, there's still really, I think a lot of people are shopping right now. I mean, mm -hmm. our virtual doc sale did great this weekend. I want nice. to say we sold everything, which is unbelievable. Wow. I know. That's um, super cool. But we've still like, I think, Maybe because we moved, I've also been on Craigslist a lot looking for like, oh, could you really use a console table here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I'm a big Craigslist fan. I keep finding stuff there still. 
I am with cars and motorcycles, so I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah just the thing, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, the thrifting part. I mean, I miss flea markets and rummage sales were definitely a different experience this year. Yeah. Did they happen? They did. Okay. But not nearly as much. And I think everyone just wasn't as out and about as often either. Right. To catch them. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. did you have to let anybody go? I did. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That had um, to be tough. It was. It was really hard because the reality is, is you just can't pay the bills otherwise. And the work wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So there just weren't the orders we typically had and scheduling mm -hmm. and planning the logistics for what few orders were there were difficult. Right. We stopped stuff, sending out. Stuff that was scheduled, did that get kicked down the can or kicked down the road to 2021 or whatever? Yep. About 65%, I think we're up to, of our business was postponed. Wow. That's a hit. All right. All right. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people think about, you know, definitely like you see how hard the restaurant industry, you know, food and yeah. food and beverage industries have been hit, but it, um, our event industry, industry is kind of a sneaky one. I don't think you see it because it's not in everyone's day to day life always. Yeah. But most, the majority of our event industry is seasonal and just got our, you know, busy season just totally taken away. Totally. Yeah. So felt like that postponed is a good way to put it. So yeah, yeah I feel it's like been difficult. 2021 will just be <laughs> cycle gangbusters. I know. Who knows though? It might not. Like what, what habits have now changed the way that catering will be done? What, what will be different in an, at an event? Will there be temperature readings when you walk in? Sure. Or hand Forever? sanitizing stations? I don't know. Well, I look like I'm terrible at predicting the future. So don't <laughs> even give this a grain of salt. But you ever go into an old school or crazy old hospital and you used to see those stickers on the light switch that says shut the light off to conserve energy. Oh it yeah. Orange yeah. from like the fifties. We don't do that anymore. Right. Yeah. We go, we go home, we leave every single light on even when we leave. Right. <laughs> I mean, I try not to, but I can tell my wife just must be trying to tell the space station where we live. <laughs> Every light is on sometimes when I get home and she's not even home. You got a charger. My dad used to charge me a nickel every time I left a light on. Oh my gosh. I'm like, do we got to get motion sensors or what's the, I think <laughs> she's just in a hurry with the kid, right? Whatever. I don't think Smart it's light. intentional. Yeah. It's just life is happening and it's not a priority. So I'm sure back then, even they were recycling way better than we do now back then. And we just kind of moved back to normal and left our lights on and recycle ish. Kind of. Maybe we should go back to the signs. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. You know, maybe that's a sign that they were working. And same thing with recycling and all that. The yeah. Individual buckets for each one. Yeah. Well, paper, I think, plastic. Yeah. <laughs> at, at that time, I think there was a care because it was more, it was patriotic to recycle, right? It was like, let's recycle your tin can so that we can kick butt in World War II and all this kind of stuff. Like it was a. Oh, nice. It was a. Green it was more smart. of a group. We're going to do this to save our country rather than save the planet through the world. Right? <laughs> like it's was, it was just a different perspective back then, mm -hmm. but we eventually went back to normal, which is lazy. <laughs> I guess what it comes down to. So I don't know. I feel that this is not going to be a permanent thing. Maybe it'll take a few years to get back to being able to see people in person typically or routinely, but yeah, I don't think it's permanent. I hope you're right. Well, at least on a social, um, on a fun level, on a business yeah. level, when it comes to commercial space, I don't know, man, my team is doing super awesome work in remote. I would have never guessed that they would do this well. Yeah. So a lot of people are enjoying it. Yeah. And if I don't have to pay rent, that's cool. Yeah. Right. That just means you can take home a bigger nut and I can give a bigger nut to my employees. So Yeah. I don't feel like that's a bad thing. I hear you. So, yeah, I'm certain that some things will change, but I don't know if it'll be like everyone's in biohazard suits forever. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. Or, no, no. <laughs> yeah. It will linger. It may linger. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be. Yeah, totally. Um, 
I want to talk to you about the stuff that you guys have and how you keep track of it, store it, inventory it, because that's got to be a headache beyond all headaches. No, it's not bad. Really? But, yeah. We're organized hoarders, remember? I should show oh, you okay. your house. <laughs> I mean, if you have some, I'm just thinking, like, we correct me if I'm wrong, right? But you got tables, you have X number of tables, you have, I imagine you have chairs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have candle holders or whatever. And because you're getting some of the stuff either used or antique, it's not like it's, oh, I'm going to order 50 of these or I'm going to order a hundred. Sure. You might have 17 of these and 22 of those and 500 we, of yeah. whatever. Yeah. So Database. just keeping track of that. Oh Database. my gosh. Yeah. It's not that bad. We have a great buddy in town um, who uses, we use a system called FileMaker Pro. It's okay. a Adobe product, Apple mm -hmm. product. And he thinks of it like um, a video game. And so he built a database for us that is wonderful. Wow. We, yeah, we named him after my grandpa, Leo. That's the database, his okay. name is Leo. And <laughs> Leo um, tracks all of our inventory, all of our invoices, all of our sales, receipts, everything. It's pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah, and then from it, I should grab you, we export a catalog. So it keeps you know all of our quantities dimensions rental rates photos of everything and then we export a catalog so that we can you know look through it with a client send it digitally if somebody wants to flip through it okay you're talking about a physical catalog yeah wow yeah we have over 500 products categories of products so okay over um, 500 categories of products yeah so you have to really have that organized by in a database you have to have it in a database wow yeah, so when somebody bad. says somebody orders whatever for this weekend, how do you know where it's stored? In our warehouse, we have it organized. It's a we're very organized. Okay. <laughs> like, are we talking so, barcodes with the scanner, or are we talking no. like, oh yeah, it's back in there, that corner? Yeah, right? no. I mean, the whole shop is kind of organized by you've got. Um, so as I mentioned, like smalls. Mm -hmm. Over the years, we've carried less and less smalls and gotten to. Um, gotten into bigs. So okay. Makes sense. We have, yeah, essentially like two rows of smalls because they're tiny, you can, it's very consolidated, they're grouped. Yeah. Um, when someone packs an order, we have a packing sheet and all the products are listed with quantities and a description. So if somebody's like, which chalkboard is this? You know, it's like gold, yeah. here's the measurement, you know, wow. they're all one of a kind. They can look and find it in the catalog. All right. And then customers can pick up or we offer delivery too. Okay. So um, the majority of the shop are all of our bigs. So all the different tables, chairs, couches, coffee tables. Couches. Yeah. We've even got a cloth at tub we rent. <laughs> really? <laughs> is, it, is it iron? It's going to be it, 300 pounds. So happy. We, we include it on a wheelie cart. Um, but then we really worry when someone picks it up and drops it off. <laughs> I don't, I'm just thinking like, that's kind of cool. What would I use that for? I don't know well, if I want to know why someone's renting a clawfoot tub. I know. Don't overthink it. They use it for like, um, beverages, um, right. whole foods had rented it a few times for like a soap bar display display. Right. So, but often it's, it's filled up with, um, cold drinks and ice and then they just right. unplug it and dump it out. We don't rent it a ton. It's not a big renter, but I think it's funny. Um, it's crazy funny. I know. We have a lot of different, like, just backdrops, too. So, like, these crates rent behind us that you can see. But um, customization over the years has become more and more popular, that somebody wants their guest list handwritten. And so we work with an amazing local illustrator who comes in and, like, freehand writes on mirrors, chalkboard, whatever they need. Wow. Yeah. So that's how we I totally have get that. I totally yeah. get that because we're sending out postcards um, as a marketing thing for calls on call. Okay. And I write like a angry six year old and I think everybody <laughs> else on my team or the majority of them, their penmanship is marginally better. So I actually hired an old employee just for that. Just for, for addressing them. Yeah. There you go. It's and important. Putting a little note on there and stuff like that. Cause yeah. Like you're going through all the time of design, the postage, getting the list, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All that for it to look like a six-year-old wrote it. You can also print out labels, you know. 
Yeah, I want it more personal. I guess there's something to be said for that, right? Yeah, there is. You're very right. Yeah. I have, I have poor handwriting as well. So that is why we hire a local illustrator. And they're kind, of, they're kind of girly. I mean, I don't know if she's going to the point of putting circles or hearts for her eyes, but it looks way better than anything that uh, anybody else on our team could do. Yeah, well, that's or great. Or would do, I guess, because there's also the, the monotony of it. Yes, you get that too. So, yeah, interesting. That's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. So you too. Tell me <laughs> yeah, to the postcards. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you decide, like when you see, let's just take the crates behind you. Mm-hmm. How did you look at those and be like, somebody's going to order those? How did you know? They're super cool looking. Yeah. But I wouldn't have known that that was a cool thing until I saw it now. Like, yeah, oh, that is cool. Yeah. I mean, I think that Pinterest really helped us with that. Like okay. there's a lot of displays where you turn crates on their side and put photos in them or All right. um, do you know build them as a back bar with liquor so oh, interesting um i like thinking of them as legos essentially anything i can find in bulk that could be a building material All right. that's how i see it so i looked at these crates as they they helped name us in the beginning it's a long story but we've got um, a really good friend whose parents had an old milk barn dairy farm okay. that um, had all of these milk crates in them and so when we were coming up with our name, I told you yeah. about our space before we even had a name. We just we really struggled with what to call our what to call this business. One thing led to another, and I said, "Hey, does Joe does Joe's parents still have all those milk crates?" And Jeff was said, "Yeah, yeah." And I'm like, mm, "What if we delivered in crates?" So we used to pack in these our smalls. All really? Bottles, and that was what you got for your mason jars. So you rented 10 mason jars, but then you got these cool crates to go along with it that you could use at your, at your event. So you shipped coolness inside coolness. That's yes. awesome. And eventually that got really heavy and they weren't very <laughs> safe for transportation. All right. And so um, we just started renting them separate, but for the most part, I mean, I just look at pieces that are going to withstand being a rental. So rentals get beat up. They, Oh, that's my know, next question. Yeah. Yeah. Like what's in, what I enjoy about pieces that are older is that they've already been through hell and back, right? All right. So this is so, a no thing. Another wedding. Well, kind of. And they, they, they only grow with character in my mind because mm. they have more and more stories now that they tell. So then we give them love and TLC. We often find pieces that we have to, you know, sand down, refinish. And that's great. We want to do that. All right. But that's part of what goes into our equation when we figure out a rental rate too. So great, you can get a good deal on this at a flea market, but now we need to put in five hours of labor and you know, $30 in materials. Now, what do we have invested in this product and what do we need to rent it for? To sure. Get that back within three to five rentals. All That's right. Like how I think about um, mm-hmm. the process. So tell me as far as packaging for this stuff, do you just have endless amounts of packing foam or peanuts or something or how do you, no. do you have to individually wrap all these mason jars? You know, mason jars rarely go out anymore. So that's kind of the beauty of as the trends have changed and we've carried more and more bigs. Um, most of the pieces, you know, we have furniture slip covers we put on so that the, you know, if it's a velvet sofa, it's not going to get stained in transportation, mm-hmm. um, moving blankets and such. But no, you know, we're, we're thoughtful and careful with our pieces, but we really don't have that many smalls anymore. Okay. Um, we've got, you know, plastic bins now that have our label on from Uline and we ask that they return them with it. It's sure. just more functional with like plastic dividers and such. Okay. But we try to be, because um, A, rentals are such a green concept. Yeah. Um, and B, what we carry in particular, you know, repurposing pieces, locally making pieces with local wood, like these tables are made from Wisconsin barn wood even. Wow. Yeah. So that, that's a very, another green layer to right. our business and what makes us boutique. So, you know, for us then to wrap everything in bubble wrap seems kind of counter, counterintuitive, right? right. <laughs> so we try Let's to- get this non-biodegradable that, foam up Yeah. There. Or um, Courtney has been known to like sew a little custom case for something that the customer can bring back. Wow. You know, so we can reuse and repurpose even the wrapping. All right. Do yeah. customers- I'm just imagining the weddings that I've been to that like everybody spends hours setting up and mm-hmm. then the show's over, the party's over. People are like, tear it down as fast as possible while they're half drunk, maybe three quarters. 
I like to not be there during that part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so do, do you guys help with the uh, repackaging or do you just trust them to bring it back to you or how does that work? Yeah. So if, um, luckily where we live, it seems like a lot of venues are a little more flexible and pieces don't have to necessarily come back until the following day or mm. even after that. Mm -hmm. So that gives the family and friends time to kind of package everything back up. And if we're retrieving it, we just ask that it's kind of all gathered and we pick it up and put it in the truck. All right. Um, or they're bringing it back. So yeah, they're going through that process. They've got their packing slip, make sure they got everything. But occasionally there's venues where we have to pick up at midnight or, oh, the, yeah. you know, the venue closes at 1 a.m. and we need to be out, we need to be there by 1030 or there's, you know, all these different time restrictions. And so those are the ones that become a little hairy and we do our best to kind of warn everyone, you know, we're coming at this time. We have to be out by this time. We ask for your help. But we do charge an additional $250 to come out and do it that night. Totally. For all of the reasons, yeah, you just said, because stuff is not found. It's dark. You can't find that one last mason jar or right. hand-thrown vase. Right. It's in Aunt Betty's it. purse. Well, somebody like put it in the bathroom for decor. Like, you know, you're kind of, you spend so much more time finding and cleaning pieces too. Yeah. You know, often like the bars will still have liquor on them or who knows right. what. So there's a lot more time involved. In yeah, our, in 250 our I feel like seems small. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, that's a really hard one for people because it's just, you know, it's events are, can be really expensive. And so we feel totally. bad throwing that on, but we give our, our team a bonus if they go out late at night because they right. leave their family and right. go out for just this one order most likely. Yeah. Um, so we do our best to like make it fair for everybody. Sure. I get that. I get that. That makes sense. <laughs> I want to talk about how you figured out how to price stuff. I mean, you don't have yeah. to use specific prices or anything like that, but what you have is so unique and different that I guess people, if they are trying to price shop apples to apples, it's just not going to happen. Right. If they compare your fancy wood farm, farm wood table to the plastic, right the mill conference table it's not yeah. exactly the same so how do you figure out or how did you figure out how to price stuff sure um well i kind of look at it when it comes to smalls versus bigs smalls tend to be something like let's say we have an event on one weekend and three things go missing okay. and i need those three things for oh. the next week sure so it doesn't matter what i actually paid for those original three the reality is, is that replacement cost is what can I get them for quickly? And that's often eBay. Right. Oh, interesting. Okay. So when it's something that I know could go missing and that's usually the small stuff, I'll look mm -hmm. to eBay for a general average price to All say right. worst case scenario, I think I could replace this item for $25 plus shipping $30. Okay. So now I'm going to go work backwards and the replacement cost is five times the rental rate. So I'm going to rent it for $6 knowing that worst case scenario goes missing, I'm, my business is going to be paid back that replacement cost. Sure. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. If it's a larger item, you know, there's a lot of things you take into consideration. Your original purchase price, there's some things that we get for a good deal, but then there's also some items that I pay an arm and a leg for because they're so hard to find. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is let's say I found it for $700. I do my math. Let's use an easier number. Let's say I found it for a thousand dollars. Do the math and say, okay, that would be a two hundred dollar rental. All but right. I know if somebody's not going to pay two hundred dollars for it. Okay. You know, you kind of have to figure out that value or know your gut check. Like, mm -hmm. all right, then I'm gonna we're gonna have to do one fifty and we'll rent it out a few more times. All right. So how, I guess, how are people renting from you now? Are they going on your website and picking through all this stuff? Yeah, we, we've always welcomed people to come to the warehouse, but with everything going on, and um, we want this to be a safe place for our team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, everything's online and you can submit a wish list just like you would put things in a cart. You oh, send wow. that okay. in and then we check availability, draft you a quote and you reserve it. Okay. So um, it's 50% down for reservations. Mm -hmm. We always say that's because we turn down business on your behalf. So yes. you reserved all of our round harvest tables, for example, and somebody else came and wanted them because we are boutique. We only have 15 of those, you know, right. that's just you. Mm -hmm. um, but you could change your mind and, and 
switch out your entire order after that, but you're still locked into that original 50%. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Seems fair. Thanks. We just try to be fair. <laughs> really? <It> seems <laughs> yeah. reasonable to me. Do you have any horror stories yeah. about stuff that got just terribly destroyed? That's a great question. And I have one really good horror story. All right. All right. So imagine a white Victorian couch, like rounded back. How did I know it was going to be a couch? White Victorian couch. And we provided a plastic cover. They had an event planner. And we heard that night they put the plastic cover on it when the party ended. Great. Only to have our team go retrieve it. And I get a call that says, and they, and they said, um, Sarah, the white Victorian couch is covered in orange paw prints. I was like, huh, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Only to put all the pieces of the puzzle together, together that the groomsmen took the cover off at some point and restarted the party, never put the cover back on. And apparently cheesy popcorn was left outside and raccoons got to the cheesy popcorn and a party on our white couch after everyone went to bed. Oh no. <laughs> we had to reupholster that one completely. It was that bad. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But I mean, I would like lose sleep when we opened worrying about white couches and white sofas. And honestly, that's the only time it's ever happened in that many years. So. Wow. Well, that's not cool bad at you, all. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Knock on Wisconsin farm. <laughs> Scotch guard, more like it. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, man, that is what people eat when they're eating cheesy popcorn. That's in you. <laughs> oh, the orange? Yeah, just we couldn't yeah. even get it out of fabric, but you're putting it in your body. <laughs> True. <laughs> Good point. Have at her. Interesting. Yeah. It so, is also what, is... what people eat when they're drinking really late at night. I suppose. <laughs> you expand your choices, I guess, when, when it's that time of night. Mm -hmm. What has been your favorite part about owning this business? Oh, uh, I think, hmm, that's a hard question. I just like think of all the people we've met. Mm -hmm. we, we have a wall. We take your Polaroid picture when we would get to meet you. And nice. it's just like, yeah, we keep it with everyone's file because there's a lot of people we work with for years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Think about it. go through that many weddings? Engaged. No, or more like, you know, someone gets engaged and it might be a year and a half out, two years out. So All right. we meet them right off the bat and we like to keep their face with their paperwork. Sure. And so now it's just really cool. After all these years, I just can't believe how, how immersed I feel in the community because I've gotten to meet all these couples and just business owners as well. Mm -hmm. So I think the best part would be the people. That's fair. Yeah. That's totally fair. I like people. So what, <laughs> we're pretty cool. <laughs> what, what do you see your business doing in the next, let's call it nine years? Or how I will it evolve, I guess? Yeah, I see us um, honing in on the boutique end of it, right. focusing more and more on working with local makers. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, we started and I would, I'm really excited to get back to this. We kind of announced a sister company called Ala Made Goods um, two oh. years ago. Okay. And I never, um, we did a few small sales from it, but essentially we had a lot of people coming to us saying, oh my gosh, I love your wood tables. You're working with all these local makers and building all of these things. Can we buy them? Do you do retail? Uh -huh. And so that really opened our eyes to the reality that, yeah, we are working with local makers. We are building, you know, 20, 30 tables at a time. How can we add on to that how can the public benefit from this some mm. of our previous clients so many of our clients are only with us once mm -hmm. and how can we have them reoccurring too mm -hmm. so that's something i would love to um lean into more is a la made you know carry hand thrown pottery hand thrown plates ceramic plates but then wow. then have enough for 100 guests but what if you wanted to get a set of 12 for your home that you could buy Mm -hmm. or your head table set was one that you could bring home and actually have with you. And that's the set of, you know, kind of heirloom plates that you'll have for the rest of your life. Oh, very cool. So I um, look forward to having the time and energy to kind of dive into some of those. Sure. And I suppose that's something that could happen even now in this uh, 
changing landscape of the event space, right? It could, yeah. I mean, it kind of started before, but what I found was the marketing side of it almost felt like you had to market two companies. Mm -hmm. So now um, we sold a six foot harvest table was our first all made launch. Mm -hmm. And it was a small batch release, but you had to sign up to buy a thousand dollar table. You know, that's a big ask to market as well, right? right? So- Depends who's asking, right? I know, or I know. Or who is being asked, I guess. Some people, that's just a thing, right? Totally. Well, and finding the right audience for that. It felt like a slightly different audience. So just needs mm -hmm. more of my attention. Okay. Yeah. Do you have little kids? I have a six-year-old, almost seven-year-old son. Awesome. So I would not buy a $1,000 table because that thing. <laughs> oh, there's, just, there's kids all the time in our house. Yeah. His, him and his buddies and stuff like that. And... So is he first grade or kindergarten? He's in first grade. Oh, great. So just, they have, I don't know where they find metal on their zippers and stuff like that. Like <laughs> they just love hearing the noise of it scraping on the table. Oh yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> My kindergartner loves trucks. And so there oh, are nice. trucks driving everywhere and construction equipment. And... Oh, sure. But we have one of these patina. tables at home and it does just add patina. So actually I would say the opposite. It's the perfect table for your seven year old. I will. Yeah. <laughs> no. no I didn't see them. <laughs> that's motorcycle money. Uh, <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. But that's, that's super cool. I think that would be beneficial. Is that website up? We just have it right now as a sub page of our a la crate page. So if gotcha. you go to the a la crate web website, it just says a la made goods. Oh, a la made. I see it right there. Yeah. Okay. Super cool. Um, so how can people find you? Our website's the best place right now. Okay. A la crate rentals.com. A la crate rentals.com. Awesome. Thank you. And On Instagram too. All right. Same thing. A la crate rentals. Um, Instagram is a la crate rentals. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Very cool. Um, is there a phone number at all? Email's probably better. Email's better. What's a good, <laughs> what's a good um, email? Info at allocraterentals.com. Awesome. Easy enough. Thank Sarah, you. thank you so much for being on the show. This is cool. Yeah, really nice to meet you. Thank you. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Coming to you just, you know, a stone's throw away from each other in Sun Prairie and Monona. My name is James Kademan and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering services for businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com, as well as draw in customers business coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs in all stages of their business on the web at drawincustomers.com, as well as the Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur in all of us, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Sarah Mullins, founder of A La Crate Rentals. Sarah, thank you so much for being on the show. You this bet. Has been thank super you. Cool. Find cool. us airing locally on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as at drawincustomers.com. Just hit the little podcast link. Thank you so much for being on the show. I want you to thank you for listening. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you.